The Honourable Member for Stormont Dundas, South Glengarry. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I'm proud to rise tonight to follow up on my question period uh, topic a few weeks ago on the issue of housing uh, and, frankly, the crisis our country finds itself in. 35 seconds to ask a question in question period is not the easiest to summarize a major national issue, so this 10-minute back and forth tonight, I hope, will be a bit more helpful. Mr. Speaker, I hear repeatedly across my riding, whether it be the City of Cornwall, uh, United Counties of SDNG, or in Aquasosny, the number of people that are struggling when it comes to housing, and equally as important, the rental market in our region. I know our, our region is not unique. It is a national scope and, frankly, crisis we find ourselves in today. One of the things I want to address as an opposition MP, we're not on the government side. I wish we were, and I aspire to get there someday. Part of our job as opposition is, yes, to propose ideas, and I have a few that I will suggest later. But it's also to scrutinize and ask tough questions about what the government has proposed, in this case, to address housing, to present some facts and figures of the reality of what's happened in the past few years, and to bring a local context here to the floor of the House of Commons. And sadly, I can do that again between the City of Cornwall, SDNG, and Aquasosny, because the stats and figures paint a very bleak picture when it comes to housing affordability for Canadians. The Cornwall and District Real Estate Board and the President, Troy Valancourt, recently gave the February statistics of where the housing situation is in our region. The average price of homes sold in February 2022 was a record $434,000. That was up 28.5% just from last February. Mr. Speaker, if you go back five years, housing prices in the Cornwall and area have doubled in the past five years. Active listings, supply is a major challenge on this problem. Active listings were down 65% below the five-year average and 81% below the 10-year average for the month of February. And so, Mr. Speaker, as we talk about this, you're going to hear in the response, likely from my, my colleague across the way, the Liberals try to tout their national housing plan. It was a 10-year plan that was introduced in 2017. Simple math would tell you they're halfway through. And you're going to hear a sunny ways picture of the billions in here and the billions there that they're spending to help the housing market. Mr. Speaker, I would argue five years in, I'd encourage them to pull back on that plan because it is clearly not working. If their plan is to make housing more affordable, getting younger people to realize their dream of home ownership, it is absolutely not working when in my region housing prices are doubling in five years, rent is skyrocketing, and there is, when you look, talk to the local real estate agents, you talk to the Canadian Real Estate Association, it is scheduled to get no better. Mr. Speaker, we need a change of course. I asked the government about this of printing money, adding to debt, and even their shared equity program, Mr. Speaker, is absolutely flawed, and we need to make sure that that never comes back again. Giving new homeowners money, interest-free money, to buy a new house, Mr. Speaker, all that's doing is raising the prices further. More and more people are realizing they can borrow more, get interest-free loans, and making the market even worse. I'll ask the government again in my comment and in my rebuttal, I'll give some ideas. But will they acknowledge your housing plan has been a fa failure five years in, and what can they do different to finally make home ownership more affordable, renting more affordable in this country? L'honorable secrétaire parlementaire du logement. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you. Records of putting roof over Canadians' head. And so I would like to thank my colleague from St Stanford, Dundas, South Glengarry. Thank you for the question and for the opportunity to speak about what we're doing for Canadians and how we're tackling the house affordability crisis in this house, in this country, sorry. We know that the main way to address housing affordability is to address supply. That is why this government launched the National Housing Strategy in 2017. The first of its kind in Canada. And since it's ambitious, yes, plan of 10 years, that backed by more than $272 billion in investments. It is a supply oriented and include, it includes a range of initiatives that address housing affordability from every angle that, we, that will have an impact. Since 2015, we have invested over $30 billion. 
creating and repairing ne nearly 480,000 units in Canada. That's 10,000 homes for over tens of thousands of Canadians. That includes homes in my colleagues' region of Eastern Ontario. In Brokeville, the Margarita Residence Corporation is building an 88-unit affordable housing complex for seniors, thanks to the federal funding delivered through the Canada-Ontario Community Housing Initiative. A major partnership with Habitat Humanity is also giving low-income families across the country a chance to access the dream of ownership, including my colleague's city of Cornwall. There are just a few examples from one region. The successes have, are repeated across the country. Yes, we recognize that we need and can do more, and that we must do. Since the last election, this government has set out an ambitious new agenda for further activities to make housing more affordable for all Canadians. We have planned new initiatives such as the Housing Accelerator Fund to help cities speed up development processes, a rent-to-own program to help renters get on the path to ownership, and an expanded access to funding to support green home retrofits. We will be working with the provinces, territories, and municipalities to develop a fairness and real estate action plan to ensure there is more protection and transparency for home buyers and renters. We will also be collaborating with Indigenous partners to co-develop an urban, rural, and northern Indigenous strategy and Canada's first ever National Indigenous Housing Centre. And so, even as we are proud of our successes in improving housing affordability, we look forward to doing more. And I look forward to exchange with my colleague on this issue. Member for Stormont, Dundas, South Glengarry. I thank my colleague for the reply, and I'll summarize again what I had said in my intervention. We are five years in, halfway through the, I think it's $72 billion that was promised. The Auditor General said actually they didn't spend what they said they were going to do. I'm actually kind of glad of that, Mr. Speaker. If they spent more than what they already did, we'd be further in debt, and I think housing prices might be even higher. We need to stop printing money in debt and giving it to people that's inflating the market. The National Housing Plan is not working. Here are some ideas that Conservatives are proposing to ban foreign buyers. The government had the opportunity through committee. They refused to do that. We've got to tackle money laundering. We need to make changes to encourage more apartments and rental build housing, looking at mortgage and lending rules and incentives. And we do invest urgently, in my view, on infrastructure like water and sewer. And on my riding presents an issue. You talk to mayors in our riding. Glen Walter, Winchester, Ingleside are examples of where that challenge is. Mr. Speaker, uh, Habitat for Humanity is a wonderful organization. Social housing is helpful in our community, but we need more action. We need more resolve. And again, clearly the direction, five years in of a 10-year plan, has failed to date. My riding of Stormont, Dundas, South Glengarry is a good example of that, unfortunately. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Housing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this government recognizes the urgency and importance of this issue. That's why our government has made it a priority. We implemented the Canada's first national housing strategy, and it's why we continue to deliver on its programs and work towards the goal of housing affordability for all. I urge my colleagues and members of all sides of this House to work with their constituency to make sure they can use the programs that are available to them. They are there for Canadians, just as this government is there for Canadians. And I hope that this time around, the party opposite will support the measures that we'll be addressing in the future of this parliament. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.